Good afternoon and welcome to our weekly broadcast broadcast here on The Authentic Married Woman. I'm Karen Seitz and I am a coach and a mentor for married women to teach them how to find their happiness within and turn their marriages around and finally have the marriage or relationship that they always dreamed of. And today I'm joined by David Cope, founder of A New Life Center. And welcome, David. Always good to be here with you. Thank you, Karen. It's a pleasure to share this with you as well and always happy to uh, join you in this to help the women in our group um, have a, a new perspective on themselves and their marriage can actually to make some permanent and lasting changes. So I got involved in relationships um, about in the year 2000, I got a divorce. And I, I worked really hard in my marriage to try to make it work, but it, it, whatever I was doing wasn't working. And I, I really was committed to try to find what it, out what it meant to, to how to have a, a loving and intimate relationship with another woman. And I'm in a relationship with my partner, Peggy, now. And what I learned wasn't something that I read in books. It was something I had to come to my own awareness that seems quite uh, simple. But in order to have a loving and intimate relationship, I have to have a loving and intimate relationship with myself. So what we teach at a new life center is how to build a relationship with yourself so you find your happiness within rather than putting the burden on your partner to, to fill your needs to create, create um, to make help you make you happy, which we know that it's impossible. So happy to share these concepts and ideas. So if you didn't mind, Karen, just kind of jump in and sharing yeah. what are our principles are, because we're going to that's our principle, one of which we're going to talk about today in our video. Yeah. And, and, and these are hard to, they're simple. Like David was saying what he realized about how to, ha how to have a healthy relationship that of course we have to have a relationship with ourselves for that to happen. And that seems really simple. And it's the same with our, our principles that guide the framework for what we're teaching about relationships. They're very simple yet take a lot of hard work and a lot of courage to apply mm -hmm. and, and to really know as an experience of yourself. And so we're going to dive into, a spit, like David said, particularly one of these we're going to really dive into today to help you understand from a new perspective. Mm -hmm. So our first principle is that you are 100% responsible for your happiness, that there's no one or anything, no thing that can ever make you happy, that happiness is an inside mm -hmm. job and you have to do the work to find that in yourself. The second principle, which is the one we're really gonna dive into today, is that the only person you have any control over to change is yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't have any control over your husband or anybody else, you can't change them, but you do have control to change yourself. And when you can really understand that, and apply that, learn how to apply that, everything changes. Your mm. whole life changes, your marriage changes, your relationship with your kids change. Mm. So it's really important. And the third principle is that to be an authentic married woman or just an authentic woman, period, you must have a relationship with yourself and feel good about who you are. And mm. it, again, all of these take hard work to understand and, and to have these experiences of yourself. But when you have a relationship with yourself and you can bring all of you into your marriage, it's like magic and it will change almost overnight. That's and if right. you are with a good man, he will respond to that like nothing else you have ever tried, I promise. Yeah. And the good thing is that we good men have very short memories and yeah. we're quick to respond to change. Unlike women generally, uh, generally women are known to harbor resentment and to pile up their, their how they've been hurt and to make lists that they pull out and use whereas men generally we we have very short memories and we will come back uh very quickly when we're greeted with an open heart and uh, acceptance yeah so what's the topic that we're going to talk about today yeah, so our title today is when you try to change your husband, you end up with a child. Wow. And we really wanted to come on today and and talk more about 
why our message is what it is. Yes. That that if if you are a woman and you have your walls up and you are with a good man, that it's your walls and and how you're pushing him away that's causing the problems in your marriage. So if you do the work to change and take your walls down or drop your walls, then everything in your marriage can change. And that can be a really confusing message and a really tough pill to swallow. So we wanted to come on and and, and talk more about that to give you an opportunity to understand that better so that you can potentially give your chance yourself a chance to have mm-hmm. a life that that is amazing and wonderful and and everything you want to be a part of um because that's really why we're we're teaching this message mm-hmm. isn't to make everything your fault or or put all the blame on you it's to empower you so that you can create a life and a marriage you never imagined possible thank you karen and so yeah. often in our facebook interactions when you're we um, putting comments in and responding, Karen. I, it's very common for the women in our group to be upset to think yeah. that they have to change. And what about their husband? And and our message is difficult to hear and understand. Is you can only change yourself. And when we want our husband to change or expect them to change in order for us to be happy. What actually happens is we become codependent, and we our how we feel about ourselves becomes dependent upon how our husband is or is not acting. But the problem is that when you try to change your husband, it creates a whole set of problems that you most women are unconscious that that they're actually creating a bigger problem by trying to change their husband, which doesn't work. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Is that it's a very simple concept to realize is that the only person you can change your is yourself and the why the reason why it's such a hard concept to grasp is because the way the mind works is is we think that it's everybody else around us that's causing us to feel this way and that's when we become a victim the, the mind tells us it's it's my husband if only he would change then i'd be happy or it's my mother and the problem is with her or it's my boss and our mind goes to this place which is wanting to think that our external world is the source of our unhappiness and the problem is fundamentally as humans we really resist changing and changing comes at a very deep fundamental level it it, it shakes up the s the our self-identity of who we are. And uh, there is a, a comic that uh, strip that I like, and it's a politician standing at the podium, you know, uh, and she's saying, you know, who wants to change? Who wants change? And everybody's, you know, I, we want change. And so the politician is getting everybody excited because that's what their, their uh, platform is on. And then the next little, um, cartoon is and then the politician says who wants to change and then everybody's hand is down and everybody closes off because everybody wants change yeah but nobody wants to change themselves because the mind tells us that if we change we lose our sense of self-identity who we know ourselves as so that's why it's so difficult for us to see that that we have to be the one that change and you know we've heard before it is be be the change you seek to see you know and that's so that's why it's so hard when you're in a marriage to become clear that you're in a sense you're the one that has to change because you can't change anybody else but when you do and realize that it empowers you to change not only your relationship with yourself and how you feel but change all your relationships because you're the impetus of the change. So what what's the title of our talk again, Karen? When you try to change your husband, you end up with a child. Yeah. So yeah. often so common that in working with women over the years, the one of the biggest complaints is that, you know, if if they have children, they say my husband's like having another children child around the house and they get very frustrated because they didn't marry a man to have them turn out to be a child. 
and that it's very frustrating. And then they then the women get uh, they get angry and upset because their their husband isn't acting and responding the way they want. He's not following through with the things they ask him to do, and and before long they feel like the burden of the marriage is on themselves, and and everything is on them, and the husband isn't there for them. But what we're trying to share is why a husband who is a man, when you married him, can turn out to be like a child. And that what we're going to talk about is working with men, what men have shared with us, Karen, over the years of what happens when their wife tries to change them. And so hopefully the women can listen and hear and see themselves that when you try to change your husband, he actually turns out to be a child. So can you share what we've learned, Karen, from the the men that have been married and their husbands, their wives have tried to change them? Yeah, of course. And and like David said, this has come from years of working with men and what they have shared with us of what it's like when their wives try to change them. And, and just a little caveat before I jump into that, please know that a lot of times it's easy to interpret our message as, oh, this just means everything is all my fault. It's yeah. all on me. That's We're not trying to say that at all. It's it's understanding that our behaviors and actions in a marriage or any relationship has consequences, positive and, and negative consequences mm-hmm. and outcomes. Mm-hmm. So if, if, if how I show up and my actions and behaviors have a ripple effect and there's consequences from that and how my husband's going to show up, I want to know about that and know how to change those things so I can change the outcomes in my marriage and my husband will respond completely different. Mm -hmm. So that I just want to reinforce that this is for you. This is to give you an opportunity and a chance to see what you can have and to see the type of man that you really are with that you may be unconsciously and unknowingly Mm -hmm. squandered. Mm -hmm. So Hmm. Yeah. And and so that's really what I'm about to share is is showing us how, and ladies, let's be honest, we all know that we try to change our husbands or we try to change the men that we are with when we're really honest. It's like, oh, let's try to get him to do this or to do that. And and it's, again, it can come from a very unconscious place, but when we're being honest, we know yeah. we do this. And, and these, what I'm about to share with you are the consequences of that. So that if you hmm. stop doing that, you get a whole whole new outcome that you'll actually really like. Mm. <laughs> so this is what we've gathered from the men that we've worked with. So I'm going to read this from a man's perspective. Mm. So this is what men have shared with us of what happens when their wives try to change them. It reinforces anything inside of myself that already makes me feel like I am wrong. Mm. It causes me to respond like a child. It's almost like being mothered and not in a good way. Mm-hmm. It strips me away of feeling like a man and reinforces that I am just a child. Mm-hmm. I'm going to read that one again because I think it's really important. It strips me away of feeling like a man and reinforces that I am just a child. So it strips away their manhood, their sense of being a man when we try to change them. Mm -hmm. I cannot react in a positive way. I react from a place of feeling unaccepted. I get angry and I'm unwilling to control my reaction. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I am being attacked. Yep. So that's, that's, go ahead, David. Yeah. You want to add anything or share anything about that? No, it's 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 just um, it's hard to. Uh, it's just hard. when a man is being told he needs to change. Yeah. It's it takes away our sense of being a man rather than being accepted and being supported for who we are. When we're constantly being asked to change and found that we're not doing things right. I remember when I was married, my wife at the time would constantly tell me, if you would just change, then I'd be happy. And I actually went to marriage counseling or therapy for myself to figure out what I was doing wrong to change that would make my wife happy. 
and I really believed that that I was the source and cause of her unhappiness. But all that did it was put made me feel less and less like a man, and didn't didn't support me in who I was and what I wanted to become. It, it just undermined me, and, and I'm so glad that you were able to articulate this to the to the women so they understand what is happening uh, when they're trying to change their husbands. So in this, what we're trying to say is, is there's a negative consequence of you trying to change your husband when you can ch only change yourself and change the, your behavior. When you're with a good man, he will respond very quickly and become the man that you always wanted him to be. If you treat a man like a child, he's going to be a child. If you treat a man like a man, then he'll be the man that you're looking for. So what what kind of message does does do these men do you think would want to tell their wives about what happens when you try to change them? Yeah, that again, this is from a, a man's perspective and, and and what men have shared with us over the years. And it's it's pretty fascinating, David, how we hear the same thing. Different men, yeah, same questions asking them what it feels like and they have the same responses yeah, and, the, yeah. and the same experience and they what they have shared is I don't get to learn from myself so it's really important to understand that that a man feels like a man when he gets to learn from his mistakes when he gets to solve his own problems mm -hmm. without us telling him what to do or how mm -hmm. to fix it men are problem solvers they are mm -hmm. they are solution oriented they are fixers and when when we're constantly on their back of you got to do it this way you've got to change this why don't you do this why don't you do that they they lose the ability to learn from their own mistakes and that mm -hmm. takes strips away them feeling like a man and strips away their self confidence so again i don't get to experience a sense of confidence because I'm not able to learn from my own mistakes. So again, at a fundamental level, when we try to change our husbands, it completely breaks down their sense of self-confidence. Mm. And then we're not attracted to them. <laughs> and we feel like they're children. And we don't want to be with them. And it's, oh my gosh, why can't he just do it this way? Why can't he just do it that way? And, and they just shrink down and shrink down and shrink down. So as women, right, we want to be with a man who who's a man and has a sense of self-confidence. So when we ch try to change them, we're undermining what we actually want mm -hmm. and, and, and creating, again, a grown up child <laughs> um, that we feel like we have to take care of. And mm -hmm. it's all coming because of of our own control. And, and trying to change them. And one thing I have learned that has been a, a really important lesson in my marriage, because ladies, this was me. I, I, I was a con complete control freak um, mm -hmm. and, and constantly trying to change my husband. And it completely shut him down in our relationship. And I thought he was the problem. I was so lost and, and constantly focusing on him, constantly focusing on trying to change him, that I had no awareness mm -hmm. of myself and who I actually was in the relationship. So when I stopped to look at that and just put the focus on me and changing the things that I saw that were like, ooh, that's how I'm showing up, mm -hmm. my husband reengaged in the relationship. He started to step up in his life. He started to resolve his own problems. Mm -hmm. So a, a lot of times we hear, oh, so the men has no responsibility. That's not, not what we're saying. But when we have our walls up or we're trying to change them, they shut down in, in a number of ways. And, and, and once you take your walls down, you go first, you change yourself. He steps up and he takes responsibility mm -hmm. for himself because he feels like a man again. So again, this, the, these are the things that, that we have control over and it, oh, the important lesson I learned, I was like, I was going somewhere and I lost <laughs> it, but I learned an important lesson over the years that my husband and I go at different paces in life. Hmm. I, I work on some things more quickly than he does. He works on some things more quickly than I do, but I was always expecting him to keep up with me and to do it how I do it and, and have the same pace as me. And, over the years, I've learned my husband has his own pace and sometimes he needs to take his own time. 
with what he's working through and, and what he needs to resolve or find solution to in his own life. And I've got to give him the space to do that. That's called, that's accepting him for who he is and respecting him for his own process and his own uniqueness as an individual. But when I'm entangled with him mm -hmm. and, and codependent on him, I can't let him be him his own self because I'm depending on him to provide yeah. me a sense yeah. of self. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. Yeah. And yeah. that's kind of, it's a good reminder that in our program, what we do is we teach women how to find their happiness and reconnect with themselves so they have a sense of self-acceptance and knowing that they feel good about themselves and when you have self-acceptance and feel good about yourself then you you're projecting onto your husband and in a good way and you realize oh well now i can see him for who he is and i can accept him for who he is and i can really find the man that I fell in love with again because I'm learning to accept myself. So if we if we deny ourselves and and don't like who we are at a fundamental level, that's what we project onto our husbands as that they are the source of our unhappiness. But when we change ourselves and how we feel about ourselves, then the relationship changed almost overnight and that's the message mm -hmm. that we're trying to reinforce is that you can only change yourself and trying to change other people only makes them angry and hurt and feeling like they're not accepted which is the often the very thing that we hear our, our women clients that come in that, that that's how they feel about their husband that the husband doesn't accept them and they don't understand that they feel un, un, uh, mis, misunderstood or, or distant and but this all yeah. comes from some fundamental issues within ourselves. So, yeah. Karen, well, and I can, wanted to, yeah. I know we're going to wrap up soon, but yeah. I wanted to add one more thing. Yeah. I can hear, because this was me too. So I can probably hear some of you thinking, well, but he's always trying to change me. And, and he's showing me, telling me what I need to do and, and this and that. And it's important to understand that. If I'm in the relationship trying to change him, trying to control, yeah. I'm going to project that onto him and yeah. think that that's how he's being with me. Or if if that is the experience I'm getting, it's a reaction to our walls being up. Yeah. So when we take our walls down and then we re-engage and show up as ourselves in the relationship, that will that that will be resolved and that won't happen anymore. Yeah. So we we get what we put into the relationship mm -hmm. we get no, we that. get that right back so yeah. just wanted to put that out there thank you so can you wrap up for today karen i can so we just nope. we wanted to come on today and and share with you again our title was when you try to change your husband you end up with a child and and just sharing what our message is really about is to empower you to to take control over the things that you have control over to change, mm -hmm. which is only yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you don't have any control over your husband to change him, but hopefully you chose a man that you really care about and, and, and felt connected to and wanted to be with. So understand that you married a, a human being, not a, a perfect God, um, and, that, and that we all have flaws and we all have imperfections. But when you try to change those things and, and you try to change your husband, you get back a, a pretty much a grown up child um, because he's going to react negatively to you trying to change him. It's going to cause him to respond like a child. It's going to make him feel wrong about some of the things he maybe already feels wrong about. It strips them away of feeling like a man and reinforces that they're a child. They can't react in positive ways. They react from a place of feeling unaccepted and they're, they get angry and are unwilling to control their reaction because they're, someone's trying to change them. Think about how you feel <laughs> when somebody's trying to change you and know that that's how your husband feels. And then on top of that, he begins to feel very weak and small and wrong inside, which is, as we all know, completely detrimental to a man's sense of feeling like a man. Yeah. 
um, and and that then they don't get to learn for them for themselves and figure out their own solutions to their problems. They can't learn from their mistakes because we're always right there telling them how they need <laughs> to learn from their mistakes, yeah. and that strips away their confidence. And then they're not a man, and we're not attracted to them. And and we all want a man who's confident and strong in themselves. But when we try to change that, we undermine the very thing that we want. So that's Beautiful. what we wanted to come on and talk Thank to you, you about. Anything you want to add to that, David? No, no, Karen. It's just um, in just empowering women uh, yeah. for the things they do have control over, which is themselves, and knowing that if I work on myself and change how I feel about myself, the relationship changes in response to that, and it's very empowering. And that's what the message that we're trying to give is not to make women wrong or be the problem and that men don't have issues and things they have to work on because we have courses for men as well. But women only can control the one thing is yourself. And when we empower ourselves to take responsibility, it makes us feel like we're in control of our life and not that it's happening to us and that somehow that our husbands are the source of our happiness rather than realizing that we can be empowered to find our happiness within. And when we do, then that then we respond to our husbands and everybody else in our life from a place of acceptance and being true to ourselves. So. Thank you, David. So if you're, you're watching and you're kind of sitting there kind of like, oh, that's me. I, I definitely try to change my husband. Or you're sick and tired of feeling disempowered and, and running up against the same issues. And you're tired of being frustrated and feeling lonely and alone. And like you, there's nothing you can do. And you're just watching your marriage. Just uh, it's it's like a speeding train wreck waiting to happen. I've been there. I know what that feels like. If you're sick of tired and being in that place and you've tried counseling, you've, you've tried and read all the books, you've tried meditation and yoga and all those things are great, but you're still stuck and, and you're not getting anywhere in your marriage, I can help. Mm -hmm. So reach out to me, send me a private message. It all starts with just a phone call. You and I will hop on a call for an hour or so, and we will get to the root of what's really going on, getting underneath the stories that you tell mm -hmm. yourself and the, the external situations that you think are what the think the problem is in your marriage. I'll help you yeah. clear that away and get to the root of what's really going on. And if I feel like I can help you and take you to that next place in your marriage, then we'll talk about how. If not, I'll be really honest with you because not everyone is a great fit to work with us and that's okay. But we'll talk about that. We'll explore that and you will get more value out of this call than you have any phone call you've yeah. ever had, that's even true. if we aren't a good fit to work together. So I would love to hear from you and you can private message me and we'll get some time set up. So thank you so much, David, yeah, um, for, for thank being you, on. And, yeah, it's a, it's a delight to share this with you because you're so engaged in living this in your in your marriage and with your husband. And it's, it's wonderful that that women can have a healthy perspective of changing themselves uh, to find their own happiness within them. So thank you so much, Karen. Thank you. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Okay.